Um, okay, how's everybody doing? Good. All right, guys. Uh, feel free to fire away. How is uh, ankle feeling? This I mean, way? he's you know he has he still hasn't practiced, so we're seeing. You know, I mean, I mean we'll see if he can get him out there and do a few things today. I mean, I, I like I said, I admire him for trying to give it a go Tuesday, but you know, I mean, he hadn't done anything since basically. I mean, other than rehab from you know the time the injury happened on Thursday. So, you know, we're just trying to get him better, and, and we're trying to play the long game a little bit more than the than the short term game. But we'll see where he's at today. The minutes that he played on Tuesday, did you feel that that was too many or anything? Or did I mean, I, I mean, I don't even know how many he played to be honest with you. I mean, I, I just know overall we ran into a, a a good team at their home court that I thought played really well, and and we probably helped them play well, and they probably helped us play poorly, and and and, and we just got to be better. So. To, to be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm not putting too much into what he did or didn't do because, you know, I, I don't I think he was probably, you know, you know, not his full self. Would you ever sprain your ankle as a player? Uh, I did a few times. And that's funny because I didn't jump much, you know, so it's pretty hard to do when you don't jump. Right. <laughs> but I, I did a few times and I and you know, I don't know if I ever had, you know, more like an ankle sprain like he had. You know, I mean, I had the traditional lower you know, kind of ones, and um, and yeah, I mean, it's, the memory. I know the first time or two you do it, it's like, I mean, I, I did play in intramurals at Gonzaga when I was a GA. I uh, dislocated my ankle, so that was that took like six months. It was it was an, ended my playing days. Probably a good thing. Tom, what did you think? What did you learn about the loss? You know, it remains to be seen. You know, I mean, you, you know, you, you know, so you, you, you know, some things happened, and whether you got exposed or, you know, j j just, you know, things slip over the course of a season. Um, you know, you, you, you try to address them, but, but ultimately, what you learn is going to show in how you respond, and, and, and so, so, so that, that, that answer is still out there. How are they responding to practice this week? Um. You know, we just, we just try to get our legs back under us a little bit, to be honest with you. I mean, we got, you know, it was a tough game and a long road trip. You know, we got home at, you know, 3 in the morning, and I'm sure, I mean, that's getting home. I'm sure everybody didn't go to bed at 3.01 either. So, you know, Wednesday was a tough day just to just kind of get your bearings back straight. And, you know, so we kind of took a lot of things off and just helped the guys get settled back in, rested back in a school routine. And then, um, you know, Thursday, which was yesterday, you know, we practiced, you know, but we, we didn't like necessarily go full. You know, I mean, I still thought we were recovering a little bit. And then and then today, you know, we'll get out there and I'll, I'll see how we feel. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, th those trips take a toll. And, then, you know, you're, you're over these seasons, you know, just the way these schedules are stacking up, man, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only coach saying that, but this three games in a week and then, you know, and, and, and it, it's a lot. It's a lot this time of year, and, and it's different than when you're used to that, that two-game rhythm. And then it seems like every fourth week, you know, you have one game, and you really get a chance to kind of hit reset. Like, I'm not seeing that, that reset window right now. Do you want to go back to SC, considering that? There's about one left to do. Well, I don't, I don't think I get a choice. I mean, that, that, that's how this thing's played out. I know we don't get a choice. So we're going back to SC at some point. <laughs> I mean, just book it. Um, there, there's no choice, and 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 and, I, and fair is fair. I get it. You know, it's just, it's just, it's hard on the, it's hard on all teams, and and it's hard on all these players. And um, you know, you you just gotta you deal with it. Going back to Julius um, in his playing time, how do you measure the micro of wanting to win right now versus the macro of making sure that he's going to be there for the long run? Well, I mean, you know, I'm mean, just looking at it a couple times. I mean, these, you know, I mean, a couple weeks ago, Kerr wasn't able to play on a Saturday, and and you, and you, and you just tried to win that game. And then, you know, uh, Zoo wasn't able to play at all at Cal. You just try to win that game. So, you know, there, there's no crazy measurement, you know. I mean, at, at the end of the day, you, you know, you, you, you trust your training staff and, and you trust your, your player. And, and, you know, I mean, obviously if he's playing, we, we don't think there's a, a, a huge risk of him getting injured any further. So, you know, but, but that still doesn't mean he's not at 100%. So... Um, yeah, so, th so there is no measurement. It's just about trying to win the next game. And whether he goes to, or doesn't go tomorrow, I mean, the, uh, the, the mission's still going to be the same. What do you tell uh, Kerr after a shooting performance like he had the other night? I mean, you, 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 you tell, Kerr's a bounce-back type of guy. I mean, you know, he, he had a, a tough night shooting, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure UCLA had to do with that. I'm sure he just had a little bit of bad luck. 
Um, you know, you just got to bounce back. And then, you know, we, we got to look at, at the end of the day, the quality of shots that we're getting, you know, are, the, are those the shots we want? You know, are those the shots we've been getting? And, um, and then, you know, you, you just bounce back. It, it's a, you know, it, it, there's a law of averages, right, in this whole deal. And, and you know, and, and sometimes, you know, you get in these tough games and, you, you know, you, you don't shoot it well. You know, and it might be because your quality of shot, but then you're like, yeah, we had these open shots, and 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 you just didn't make any of them. Well, you're not going to make every open shot. You know, you're, I you mean, 35 to 40 percent of your threes are going to go in if you're lucky. You know, so so you're going to miss open threes too, and it just it gets a little bit exasperated sometimes. So we we haven't even, I mean, it's a blip on the radar in my mind, and um, you know, we're we're just going to move forward and and you know and, and try to make the next one. In, in the sense, when when you see that happening to him, is there a point maybe in the second half where you tell him, "Hey, maybe don't don't shoot even the open ones"? I mean, I don't know. I don't think you can do that. You know, if you, if you look at um, if you look at how how we've played this year at Illinois, I mean, who played really well in the second half to kind of bring us back at Tennessee? Who you know kind of sparked our run? You know, and 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 Kirk has that ability and and. And, uh, and, I, and I'm going to trust that ability, and I've seen him do it, and I believe in him. And, um, you know, with him, I, I always feel like the next one's going in. I remember, say, an Adam Morrison having like a two for 18 night. Oh, man, you're making me dig here. Uh, uh, I, I'm sure Adam did, but you know what? You know, you know one thing I know about Adam? He thought the 19th shot was going in. And, um, and, and, and that's an amazing trait. And, and so, you know, Kerr has a lot of belief in himself. You know, he's a, a proven shooter, and um, you know, the the next one's going in. You go from three games in five days. Now you have like one over the course of seven, eight, nine days, and then you're going to have another one of those three and five, which I guess is five and ten. How do you kind of balance that? Where you'd mentioned the having like a little bit of a break, but. Are you too worried that after playing three and five and then only having one that you could like lose some sort of um, balance or pace? No, I'm not worried at all. I mean, it just, you know, I mean, I think you're worried about your team being fresh. And, you know, I mean, and, and you know, obviously I want to, hopefully we play energized tomorrow. I mean, th that that's all my focus is right now. Once we get through that, then I ain't going to overcomplicate it. The next focus is going to be UCLA. And, 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 you know, then, you know, SCs, you know, you know, coming right behind, and then you know, at the end, we, we got to play a Arizona State team that will have played basically nine days earlier. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not overthinking that. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm really focused on our team having great energy. You know, and, and playing with the emotion we need to Saturday, and then moving forward, we'll we'll deal with UCLA, and then the games coming up after that. So you mentioned Wednesday being tough, obviously. So did you treat yesterday and today any differently as far as? Turning around from that trip? Me, yeah, I mean, yesterday a little bit. I would say, you know, yesterday was more of just kind of like, a, you know, get back on on the court, get moving again, you know, type of thing. Touch on some concepts, touch a little bit on the upcoming game plan, but it wasn't anything over the top, you know, or, or strenuous. And then today, we you know, hopefully we'll be able to practice normal and and then hopefully, you know, it's, and it's early game tomorrow. So, you know, you, your game day rhythm is, you know, get your normal shoot around and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Could try zoo in practice today, or are you planning to see what? You yeah, do? I mean, I'm, we're going to see how he's feeling today for sure. Yeah, for sure. So it could be a similar situation Tuesday. Or it, it could be. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I, I don't. I honestly, I'm being honest with you guys. I don't know yet. I don't know. You know, we got to see where he's at. Your thoughts on Bobby Hurley? You must have run across him a few times on the recruiting. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know him great. You know, obviously respected him a ton as a player, and he's got a great pedigree. And you know, I mean, I'll t I'll tell you this. I mean, he's. I know his team Saturday is going to come out with high energy and high emotion, and um, and 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 they're here for the fight, and 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 that's 100% what I'm expecting. Scouting report on Arizona State and what you expect them to do offensively and defensively. Well, I mean, you know, they're they're uh, right now they're 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 playing with great energy and effort, you know, and and the results might not be exactly what they wanted, but I know. This is a, a team that won at Oregon earlier in the year. I mean, they won at Creighton, and those are two hard places to win. So, so that shows you their potential and their upside. Um, you know, offensively, you know, they, they have, you know, they're, they're jet-quick guards that are very aggressive, 
and they hunt shots and, and they can take and make tough shots, you know, inside, you know, they're developing, but they got good length. They do got good length and they got good athleticism, um, to, to, to go with that. So, you know, and they got bodies. I mean, they have, you know, three or four guys they can throw at you in there as well. And then defensively, they're just scrappy. I mean, they're a good defensive team. I mean, their offensive numbers might not be great overall, but defensive the numbers are really well, really good. And they're just, they're scrappy. They're handsy. They're quick. You know, they take risk and they have rim protection behind it. So it, it, it's, it's a, it, it's a daunting task. I mean, they're, they're a, a scrappy group and, and, and we're expecting I know them to play really well here. How many times did Gonzaga ever play ASU when you were there? I don't think ever. I don't think ever. Yep. So before you took this job, what was just kind of your education on ASU? Well, basketball? listen, I've told you guys before, with me, it's simple. I mean, I don't have, it's just never been in me to, to have the time and energy to root against anybody. And I, and I, and trust me, I've heard, you know, the fan bases, you know, so I, I know it's a, it's a rivalry game which is really cool. I mean, those are fun to be a part of. And um, I, know, I know the fans make it a big deal. And, and for me, there's nothing personal about it. You know, I, I just want to come out. And, and, and for us, it, it's another opportunity to, to play well and get the result we want, um, you know. And, 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 and so we'll, we'll see, you know, if, if um, over time, you know, the, you know, I grow more into the rivalry mindset, you know. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. You know, but uh, but at this point, you know, I, I mean, I, I know it's going to be a fun game. I mean, I know this. I know Mikhail's going to be rocking. I know the fan base is excited for it, and 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 I love being part of those. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. How important is it to have a well a well played, crisp, executed game to get some wind in your sails to watch that last game out of your mouth? Well, I mean, I, I think the main thing is just getting the win. You know, I mean, I I don't know if you're going to have a a clean, well, crisp played game against an aggressive team like Arizona State. So, you know, I mean, at, at this time of the year, it's about winning. I mean, of course, you, you want to win and you want to – and sometimes it feels a little better if you play well. But, but you know, th that, that's not the end-all, be-all. The end-all, be-all is just finding a way to come out on top in, in, in a game like Saturday. And, and so that, that's going to be my mindset going into the game is let's not overcomplicate it. You know, let's make sure we're ready to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And, um, and, 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 and hopefully be the last one standing at the end. Is there anything else that kind of jumped out at you uh, after the UCLA game when you, when you looked at this? I mean, I mean no, no, nothing. I mean, you, 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 I mean, I know everybody was excited. We got off to a great start. And, um, you know, and, and, and I don't think UCLA is off to a bad start. You know, I, I just think that sometimes, you know, what's so funny about these things is um, your, your initial – expectations drive your emotional responses and and in UCLA came in the season ranked second they lose a game to a really good Gonzaga team that played great that day and UCLA didn't and then they lose a tough overtime game to Oregon who's obviously playing better and people kind of stopped talking about them but they're still ranked in the top 10 and and all those kids played in the final four the year before I mean they're really good and, you know, we, we were a team that was off the radar and kind of upstarts and, and we played well. So, so nobody expected anything from us. So, it's, 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 so to me, I, I knew that going into the game. I knew it was going to be tough. And I, and I knew that UCLA was going to be ready to play. I mean, I, I, I had no doubts in my mind that, that, that Mick would have his group ready. And, um, and, and obviously, you know, we had every excuse in the book, but it, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you went in there and you didn't play well against a really good team and, and, you know, we got to get through this game Saturday, and, and then, you know, then we can start figuring out hopefully how to play better next Thursday. Is there any part of you who said, dang, I wish you could have played them on January 2nd? Or I mean, I, I'm, I mean, for me, living in hypotheticals is a real waste of time. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to participate in that. And, and like I said, I have no control over this schedule. And that, that's being 100% transparent and honest. So that's how it was handed down. So we took it, and we, we went there and gave it a shot. It didn't work out, and I'm not putting any more thought into it than that. Because, I mean, em emotionally, you can get yourself tied up in knots, and, and you can find every excuse in the book, but that's not helping me next time. So I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm about what's going to help us the next time. That's where my focus is. Do you anticipate getting Kim back this year? I, I got nothing on that for you. I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's a personal situation with him, and and so I got nothing on that. Well, in that regard, uh, you played Adama um, in the first half 
uh, on the yeah. Bay trip, and I know part of that was probably because with the Julius not being out. But what are, have you seen from him lately that has warranted him getting more opportunities? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's he's been on an uptick in practice. You know, I mean, he he's kind of gone through the normal ebbs and flows for a young freshman. You know, when when and and, and, and and it's no matter how you slice it and dice it, no matter how honest are you, you are with them that they're probably not going to get much playing time and it's a development year, it's still hard on them emotionally. And, and so he struggled at early at times, and then now he's kind of bouncing back, and I, and I think he's a good player, and, and, and I wish, you know, I had opportunity to get him more opportunities. But, um, you know, right now we're in, we're in a tough conference season, and, you know, I also, to be honest with you, I want to protect him a little bit. You know, because because I think he's he's got a real chance to be something pretty special, and so I don't want to, you know, it's it's a little bit like, you know, keeping that talented pitcher in, in the double double A for a little bit, you know, and and then making sure he's major league ready when he gets major league minutes. Is, is Umar someone that he could maybe turn to to see how what it's like to have to deal with this? For sure. I mean, I, I think you know they they I'm sure they've had lots of conversations about it. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it that, you know, you, you just got to bide your time and sometimes it doesn't happen as fast as you want. But, um, you know, I mean, and, and Umar still, he's still in, he's still in the midst of it. You know, he, he, he hasn't come out on the other side yet, you know. I know he's played a couple good games and, and I'm excited for him and, and we need him. We really need him. I mean, we're better when he's better. Um, so, but, but he's still, you know, he's still on his personal journey as well. Can you talk about your defense of how you think it's played and what you need to do moving forward? I um, mean, yeah, I think our defense has been really good overall. You know, I, I think, um, you know, overall our ability to, to pressure the ball and, you know, and, and, and be disruptive has been good. I thought I think our rim protection and, and, and stuff in the paint has been really well. I mean, I wish our rebounding numbers were a little bit better, but sometimes, you know, you, you can't have it all, you know, and, and, and the way we're pressuring on defense, you know, maybe sometimes leaves you open to and the way we're protecting the rim with our bigs leaves you – susceptible to some offensive rebounds and um you know and, and i know everybody wants every everything to be buttoned down and tight but it's just not quite how it works there's give and takes within the game and and uh, you know we've we've um you know decided on areas we want to take and understand sometimes what the give is and, and you're trying to always try to tighten up those gives you know so um yeah but we're just going to stay on it i mean i you know Traditionally, I felt like, you know, the teams I've been involved with, the defense gets better over the course of the year. You know, as you get more reps under your belt, more scouting, and, you know, and you get more layers to your defense. And, um, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to see if we can try to add a few things, you know, down the stretch here and, um, and you know, and, and continue to be, you know, a, a, a disruptive team at that end of the floor. Point about Dom earlier. Is that a risky strategy, though, in, in any sense in this day and age when the transfer portal era, et cetera? Or, or is it easier? But, I mean, but, but Bruce, there's there's risk with everything, and and I'll just say this: you you have to have relationships with these kids, and you, and you got to be honest with them. At the end of the day, and then you know that then then I have to deliver on my end, and then they have to deliver on their end. I mean, it's just it's just how it works, and. Um, you know, I, I don't have any of those concerns with Adama at this point, and, and if that's something he decided to do, that's a, a personal decision that would surprise a lot of us. All right, guys. See you guys. See you tomorrow early. There's a, a guy who grew up in uh, South Phoenix. I'm sure this <clears throat> game means a lot to you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, How many Arizona ASU games did you ever go to growing up? I like two or three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which ones? When Nick was here, uh, the dunk, the game where Jahi dunked and the whole crowd stormed the court, uh, it won when DeAndre, or er, actually I've been four, the one DeAndre was here and then the one when Nico was here. Okay. How, how's the reaction been uh, in practice and whatnot from after losing on Tuesday? I mean, do you feel like people are renewed focus or fire about we, we need to do better than what we did? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, Everybody win and lose games, so it's not nothing we ain't used to before. Like, we obviously lost the game before this game, so we just gonna we just approaching it like how we would any other day. Obviously, it's renewed focus, but it's still just a game, you know. So, from I mean, when you guys had that first loss, I mean, obviously that was the first one of the season. How did you guys kind of hit the reset button and move forward from that? And how can you maybe apply it to this time around? Uh, after the first loss, I mean, it was Christmas break, so we just wasn't really, we wasn't here. 
or some guys were here, but we weren't really focused on it at the at the moment. Obviously, it got readdressed. But this last game, I mean, you got to have good teams have quick turnaround. So we got we have a game tomorrow, and that's what we we're more focused about than what happened a couple of days ago. You guys struggled shooting the ball as a team uh, against UCLA. What do you guys think you could have done? What do you think you guys could have done better um, against them? I mean, UCLA is a good team, and they hit shots and we didn't, so you kind of know how that went. <laughs> Walk us through the lengthy road trip, the experience of going up to Stanford, Cal, spending time with the Warriors, and then the trip down back to Los Angeles. It was a good experience. Uh, I mean, I've obviously been all over California, but for the guys that haven't, for guys from the East Coast or guys from out of the country, they haven't, I felt like it was a good thing for them to see the whole state of California in six days, which not a lot of people have seen before. I haven't seen it in six days, but I've seen it over time. So it was a good experience. It was a good team, team bonding thing for us. We was with each other for a week straight. How was your experience being around the Warriors at their practice facility, going to the game, getting a chance to spend time with some NBAers? Uh, it was actually a real good experience. This is my first time like seeing like the behind the scenes like situation with the NBA team and being that close. And, you know, obviously I know some of the guys on the team, so it was, it meant a little bit more to see, like, them warming up and seeing guys that I played high school against in the NBA now. So it was a good experience. Were there any funny moments or interesting moments with the guys, especially maybe some of the international guys who hadn't seen California or hadn't, other than last year, maybe with some of them? Like, um, I mean, Kerr's a character, and you know that, so. He make he laugh and joke all day, so all California. But it's not even just California. He laugh and joke here, so it is what it is. <laughs> How's he been? Uh, did, does, does he act in any way like he just had uh, an over twelve game, or has he moved past that? No, nah, we all moved past that. We not finna hold nobody against how they played a few days ago. We about to we just refocusing on the game for tomorrow. Dylan, did you got? One of those, you know, there's, uh, there's so many analytics nowadays in college basketball, and there's one thing tweeted today where he analyzed uh, player performances in the box score and then player performances overall when he's on the floor and in the game and how the team did. And he rated you number 12 in the country based on that uh, as far as, like, calling you a blue guy. In other words, helping the team more than your stats might suggest. Does that surprise you, or and do you think of yourself in that way? Uh... I mean, I don't really like pay attention to nothing like that, but I, I actually I did see the tweet this morning, but it was just that's just something cool. I mean, it is what it is. I just play the game, you know, and I fall where I fall. Talk to us about Arizona State. <clears throat> what you guys have talked about, seen on film, what you're expecting for this week? Um, obviously, they're it's a rivalry game, so they're gonna come in here hungry and they're gonna be itching for a win, and they're a good team. I mean, I know their record might not show it, but. They're a good team. I know some of the players, and they're good individual kids and players. So we're going to have to bring all we got tomorrow. And especially, it's a, it's a new game. you got to get some sleep tonight and get ready for the dub. Especially being from Arizona, does this mean a little bit more to you? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, I played in the game last year twice. So I definitely feel a little bit different with fans. But it's not nothing I ever did before, you know. Plus, everybody that you grew up with is wearing the other color. So, yeah. you know, you've talked to us about how proud you are to be a Wildcat, even though your family lives up there, right? Yeah, I mean, that's just how it feel. You know, like, I wasn't, that was obviously an option, but I'm proud to be a Wildcat, like you said. So, <laughs> the, uh, the game with the, with the Jahi dunk, mm -hmm. did, did you head out on the court? or? I was a ball boy for ASU, actually. Okay. So, it's so. actually kind of crazy. <laughs> Uh, I remember, I remember like it was yesterday, and I know Jahi like personally. So when he did that, I was like, "Wow!" And then ten years later, or however many years later, I'm sitting here with a U of A shirt on. So, <laughs> can you be seen on the camera during that dunk? Uh, I have never seen it on video, but I've seen like the picture, but I've never really seen it on video. But I was definitely there under the hoop. So. <laughs> memories or stories or anything you can share with us about being a ball boy up there? Um, just being, like, getting, I know, like, a lot of the older players, um, I still see them now to this day, and they always say, like, I can't believe you went over there, you know? They always make them jokes, but 
I mean, I had to do what was best for me, and obviously I felt like the love was over here. It was love over there too, but it is what it is. I had to pick a side, and I picked this one. Were you a ball boy when James Harden was playing? Nah, not that, not that long. I've been to a few games when he was there, but I wasn't a ball boy then. I was too young. What was your week like? Uh, Coach was saying how Wednesday was rough. You guys got back late what, Tuesday night. Did you do anything different or sleep more or anything like that the last couple days? I mean, yeah, I haven't slept in my bed for a week, so I definitely took some time to myself to sleep and get some rest. But obviously, uh, I know you have a game tomorrow, so I still have to prepare for that. And just whatever it is, watch a film, working out, uh, getting extra shots or whatever. Well, after a week like that, too, I mean, like on Wednesday, do you want to even not touch a basketball or did you go out and take some shots or something? Uh, uh, I stayed off my feet. I knew it was best for me to just chill. The UCLA game, not to belabor it, but on the monitor, there were times where you were seen bringing everybody together, keeping everybody together. What did you learn about yourself and leadership when things aren't going your way in a hostile environment and making those little adjustments and, and keeping everybody in the game? Is it for you wanting to, to be one of the leaders on this team? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't like nothing I tried to do on purpose. It just kind of happened, you know? And obviously, it was loud in that gym. I know the guys have seen it on TV, seen it, it was pretty loud in there. And we weren't playing our best, so I feel like as a as the five on the court, we got to stay together, even if it's not going our way. Even though we know it's not gonna end how we want to end, we got to stay together because again, we do play them in a week, you know. Did you learn something about yourself though, or the rest of the team? Because you guys stayed together. I mean, and, and really a, a, a tough situation, and, and it looked like you were one of the guys kind of rallying everybody to, to keep it together. Yeah, I mean, we've been in hostile situations before, so I feel like even though. It didn't end how we wanted it to end. Um, it's still not something we haven't seen before, but that's just how it went down, you know? Um, I learned, I mean, we all know we all got pride. Like, we all take pride in wearing this jersey, and we gonna win some in this jersey and lose some in this jersey. So that's just how it went down. All right, last one. Any, any uh, NIL updates? How's everything going with your uh, NIL moves? Um, everything going good. Obviously, I still got the uh, DT's Triple Chocolate uh, at Screamery. That's the latest one. I got some new ones coming soon, but y'all follow me on social media. Y'all see them, yeah. Uh, can you give us a review of how the, uh, the flavor is? Uh, it's doing real good, actually. Like, uh, Thank you to the city of Tucson for going to see it and all state of Arizona. A lot of my friends that I haven't spoke to in a little bit, they always send me snaps or messages of them eating the chocolate ice cream. So that's cool. <laughs> Good.